What's your reaction to the five game suspension? I think it's correct. I think they got it right. Uh, you know, you've got to set an example. There's a standard uh, as a coach, as a leader, of how you conduct your business. And, you know, to me, uh, when Greg and Juwan had the initial altercation, all right, uh, you know what? I think if that was it, both of them might have gotten a reprimand. But when Juwan passed through the line and then came back, and basically created the melee that followed. Uh, in terms of you know the players that got involved, that's mirroring basically behavior. They saw their coach take a swing at someone else, and then all of a sudden the melee began. Uh, it escalated the situation to the point where, look, you can't raise your hand. I mean, I mean, it, absolutely, you know, an embarrassing act in terms of leadership, in terms of setting a standard, in terms of the type of behavior that we expect from. Our leaders, it's disappointing. And if everyone says, well, you know, first and foremost, you know, he, you know, Greg Hart shouldn't have called a timeout. No, Greg Hart can call a timeout if he wants. Juwan Howard shouldn't have been pressing. Juwan Howard can press if he wants. Here's a coach your own team. But that cause and effect, all right? So you call a timeout, you're, you're pressing. Uh, Greg Hart puts his hands on. Look, every time I've, I've been through handshake lines 33 years of my life, I don't even know how many, all right? You know what? Sometimes you'll get the guy's attention. That's not a first-time event, let me tell you something. But, you know, as an adult, you've got to handle that situation. But when I, uh, the, the, the big thing you guys are missing is what Juwan Howard's statement yesterday was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Because finally, there was someone who took responsibility. Greg Gart should come out of the statement and take mm-hmm. some responsibility. But I didn't think Greg should have been suspended. I think the fine is fine. And I think what they did in regard to Juwan uh, was the right message to send to the young people that he's leading. Seth, let me ask you this, though, because I, I feel as if the, the fine of $10,000, it's kind of like a drop in the bucket, and I, that's a lot of money, but also I understand what Greg Gard is, is making currently. Isn't there some case that there should be some culpability on Greg here to a degree for grabbing? And Seth, you and I talk about this all the time. Like That was going to be a blow by. Jawan Howard was not going to, he was yep. going to shake his hand and keep moving. And you could tell by his complete body language that he did not want to talk to Greg Gard. But for Greg Gard to grab him and feel entitled to grab him and say, no, you're going to talk to me now, shouldn't there be some kind of culpability on that other than just a $10,000 fine? Shouldn't he just have like a one-game suspension or something like that? I, I don't think so, Jay. Well, because I've had that same type of situation happen with me. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You're a leader of the Michigan program. First of all, you know, blow by is one thing. He didn't. He, that wasn't a blow by. Juwan didn't want to talk to him. And, and like, here's my thing: where Greg made a mistake is you don't have to explain yourself on why you called the timeout. All right. Mm-hmm. It, 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 the one reason I would have given Greg a, a, a um, one game suspension was his words at, at, at the post game press conference. You know, you know, basically being the me, well, maybe Juwan didn't know the rules. That's BS. That's BS. That like, like to me, the way both coaches handled the post game press conference. I'm disappointed in, like, the SIDs or whoever their advisors are. Before you go into a press conference, when there's an altercation, right, you sit down and you think through exactly what I'm going to say. And both of them wanted to be right. You know, both wanted to defend their point of what happened and why it happened. Um, so, no, I, 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 here's my thing, Jay, and it's real simple. I don't think that Greg Gard, I mean, uh, Juwan Howard got suspended for anything that happened at the start of the handshake line. Like, I think that was the fine aspect of it. If, if, if Greg grabbed him, if Dewan grabbed his shirt, pointed at him, uh, and, you know, the silliness of saying, you know, I'm going to remember this. Yeah, you, you know what? You know, Jay. I mean, every, every coach creates causes. You play for a coach that created a cause every single day for yeah. every single game. But, but I think both of them would have gotten a reprimand and a fine. Yeah. But the egregious act of reaching over the top and open hand or not open hand makes no difference because that started – really to escalate the melee that all of a sudden now you have three players and two of his players that basically mirrored his behavior saying, all right, if coach can swing. And then even in a post game, when Hunter Dickinson said, you know, Hey, if you mess around with the family, you know, we're going to protect you know, the members of the family. Even that message saying, like, it's okay. Cause let's say, Jay, you, you, you were a great player walking on and off the court, even today, because of the manner in which your, your career ended. You hear people say something all the time. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, you know, if, if, you were, if you reacted every single time someone said something to you, all right, think about where you would be. 
Yeah, I agree. Does with that everything. make any sense? I, it does. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I agree with everything you're saying, Seth. There's no question Jawan shouldn't have uh, retaliated at the level that he did because it escalated everything. He he got the five game suspension. The other coach, it's whatever he could coach his team the way that he wants to. Seth, what should they do with the the handshake uh, line or whatever you call it in basketball in general? I mean, like, just I don't see why you got to I – I personally don't see why I need to shake your hand at the end of a game. I could just simply wave across the court to you and say I'm out. Yeah, you know, I, I've given this a lot of thought. You know, because when you know, I first saw it, uh, my first reaction is, why, you know, why are we doing this? And I know in football, like you guys usually, like you, at the end of the game, you'd probably go to the guy that covered you. Is that how it works? Or, yeah, or, or you, you might. I might see a teammate, an ex-teammate, a high school buddy right. or something. And maybe. I would probably say right. out of all the games that I played in, I would say 50% of the time I went straight to the locker room. I ain't got nothing to talk to you about. I'll see you by the buses. Yeah. I, I think. I, yeah, here's the thing. I mean, if we can't have enough decorum, at the end of a game, to cross over and you know shake your opponent's hand and say whatever you want to say. Because here, here's the key: what, 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 what is sport about? Well, sport is about teaching you life's lessons. And we we talk about it all the time. The things that you learn in sport obviously carry with it, whether it's hard work, whether it's how to be a good teammate, whether it's dealing with adversity, uh, whether it's you know bouncing back and and getting to the next play. Well, you know what. You're telling me at the end of a competition, and we see it in the Stanley Cup, we see it in other things, that you can't have enough decorum to be able to shake someone's hands and say, you know, hey, if you win, good luck. If not, you know, hey, uh, we'll see you down the line. You're like, thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.